Hello everyone and welcome back to Zakilt Educational Channel. So in this video we are going to solve the previous year's question which came in CPCB Scientist B position. Yes, the questions for both chemistry and environmental science students, those who will be having a single combined examination, we will be solving in this video. So get ready with your notes so that you can note down all these questions which will be very very important in the upcoming examination. So without wasting much time, let's start today's video. So here three questions we had already discussed in the previous video and if you haven't checked the previous video, you can check the link given in the i button as well as in the description below. So this is from the chemistry portion which is environmental chemistry actually and it will be beneficial for both chemistry and environmental science students. So we will start with question number 44 in this paper. So the 44th question is, which is the major sink for the atmospheric carbon? So sink means the atmospheric carbon is going to which place that means which is dissolved or which is absorbed in which of the following places whether it is ocean, river, land or none of these. So here atmospheric carbon is actually the major reason and here it is actually carbon dioxide here CPCV has put its own watermark but it is actually atmospheric carbon dioxide where it is going. So maximum carbon dioxide is taken by the oceans. Yes, ocean are the major sink for the atmospheric carbon dioxide. As a result, we are able to feel less heat. So they are trapping the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. They are utilizing it. So that's why we are feeling safer. If they are less, then it will be more difficult and global warming will be more. But here rivers, land, trees, they all are the sink. But major sink if it is asking, it will be the ocean. Coming to the next question, it is asking about the World Environment Day. Very chocolate question, when it is celebrated. So we should know every important environmental dates because they are asking very frequently. And here option D will be correct. 5th June is celebrated as the World Environment Day. We all know. And here I have made a video on the important days for the environment related days. So you can see the link in the i button as well as in the description. Coming to the next question, question number 46 as per this question paper. The question is the total dissolved solids that is TDS can be reduced by the following method. So the total dissolved solid it is coming from the waste water treatment. So water treatment very important portion you should be aware of that and you should prepare accordingly. I will be telling you which are the major portion while solving this question. So it is telling which process is useful to reduce the total dissolved solids from the water. Whether it is distillation, reverse osmosis or ion exchange or all of the above. So here I will tell you the answer. I will not take much time. Maximum dissolved solids can be reduced by reverse osmosis. But here it is asking which of the method can be used. All these three methods are used to reduce the total dissolved solid in the wastewater. So all of the above will be the correct option. And here you should note down ion exchange technique. It is also called as deionization technique. So you should note down, you should not get confused. Deionization or ion exchange technique, both are same to reduce the TDS level in the water. Coming to the next question, this is also very frequently asked, temporary hardness, permanent hardness of the water. So which of the following salt is responsible for the temporary hardness of water? Hardness of water means we have discussed that means any chemicals or compounds which are present in the water that cause the hardening of water in the technical term, they are called as the salt, the salts which are responsible and there are two kinds of salt. That is one causing temporary hardness and one causing permanent hardness of the water. Temporary hardness of the water, I will tell you, can be removed or it can be reduced by the boiling technique, simple boiling technique. But permanent hardness need much more effort. And here, which salt is responsible for the temporary hardness of water? 
it will be option a magnesium carbonate so all the carbonate salts are responsible for the temporary hardness of water and salts which are chloride salts or sulfate salts they are responsible for the permanent hardness of water so magnesium sulfate calcium chloride calcium sulfate all are the salt which are responsible for causing permanent hardness of water so i hope you are noting down let's move to the next question next question is also very very frequently asked in the environmental science entrances be it set exam or net exam so here the question is nitrogen and oxygen are the major constituents of air yes we all know 78 percent around nitrogen is there and followed by the oxygen so here it is telling that they are the major constituent of air but these compounds these molecules they do not react with each other to form the oxides of nitrogen so they are not forming no2 no no3 why they are not forming they are asking what is the possible reason the options are the reaction is endothermic and requires very high temperature or the reaction can be initiated only with the presence of a catalyst or the oxides of nitrogen are very unstable or nitrogen dioxide and oxygen are unreactive so here the correct option will be option number a yes to make this reaction take place that means in order to combine nitrogen and oxygen it requires very high temperature and it is very very highly endothermic reaction so as a result in the atmosphere that much temperature is not present so these two compounds are not mixing or combining and forming their oxides that means oxides of nitrogen are not formed because in the atmosphere that much high temperature is not present for this endothermic reaction let's move on to the next question i'll be telling you that nitrogen cycle is also very important you should be thorough with that so in cpcv they are also giving in the hindi also the questions are asked same question now coming to the question number 49 question 49 in this paper is photochemical smog occurs in warm dry and sunny climate which of the following is not amongst the components of the photochemical smog so this is asking that which is not the component you should read the question very carefully it is not asking which is the component it is asking which is not the component so here the options are nitrogen dioxide ozone sulfur dioxide or unsaturated hydrocarbon so you have to think this i will let the answer know after a few seconds so here the correct option will be option number c yes sulfur dioxide is not causing the photochemical smog but nitrogen dioxide ozone and unsaturated hydrocarbon they are the components or constituents which are forming the photochemical smog when it reacts with the sunlight sunlight means photons or photo so from there the photochemical smog is taking place but sulfur dioxide is not responsible coming to the next question question is from the acid rain which is also one of the very important topics coming in this examination the question is what is the ph of acid rain so here basics are clear you can able to answer this question near 7 it is neutral not at all about 10 it is also base that is alkaline it is not correct more than 5.6 it is not correct less than 5.6 will be the correct option because normal rain is also acidic in nature yes normal rain has the ph of 5.6 yes you should note down normal rain has the ph of 5.6 because the carbonic acid is formed when the carbon dioxide present in the atmosphere reacts with the rain water it forms carbonic acid that's why its ph is 5.6 but if it is less than 5.6 it is called as acid rain because it will be having the components of nitrogen dioxide and sulfur dioxide which will be forming the acids which are hno3 h2so4 so these are the acid formed by the dissolution of oxides of nitrogen and sulfur so they are causing the acid rain you should note down 
if it is less than 5.6 the pH then only we can call it as pH of acid rain next question question from the analysis environmental analytical techniques which are very important I am telling you these are also very very frequently asked GC is a promising technique in environmental analysis so here by reading the sentence only you will be able to know what is GC GC environmental analysis that means it is talking about gas chromatography yes it is asking gas chromatography is what type of analysis so it allows us for qualitative data analysis or quantitative or both qualitative and quantitative or none of these so here the correct option will be gas chromatography is the technique which allows us for both qualitative and quantitative analysis so from gas chromatography we will be able to know the quantity of the chemical present and also the quality that means which chemical or elements are present so it can be helpful with the help of the graph which is called as chromatogram you should note down in gas chromatography or any chromatography chromatogram is the output from which we can analyze it and we can see the quantitative and qualitative behavior of the elements present in that compound so here coming to the next question next question is which of the following cannot be used as adsorbent in the column adsorption chromatography again question from the analytical technique that is from the chromatography column adsorption chromatography type and here it is asking which cannot be used as the absorbent in the column absorption chromatography and the options are magnesium oxide silica gel alumina or potassium permanganate so potassium permanganate will be correct option because magnesium oxide silica gel and alumina all these three can be used as adsorbent in the column adsorption chromatography you should note down they may ask this time that which are used as the as the adsorbent in the column adsorption chromatography so these three are used but this is not used so this will be the correct option in this question kmno4 potassium permanganate is not used as adsorbent in the column adsorption chromatography let's move to the next question question number 53 question 53 is in sea water what is the ideal red field rate ratio maintained at any depth so here for some of you red field ratio will be the new term which you might not have heard so i'll tell you what are the option 1 is to 1 32 is to 1 62 16 is to 1 and 64 is to 1 so i'll write down 64 is to 1 is the d option 16 is to 1 is the b option so here i will tell you first what is red field ratio so red field ratio is nothing but it is the ratio of dissolved nitrate to phosphate ratio in the ocean so here in sea water actually the dissolved ratio of nitrogen is to phosphate so nitrate is to phosphate to be clear nitrate is to phosphate ratio is called as the red field ratio in the sea water and the ideal ratio is 16 is to 1 you should note down 16 is to 1 is the ideal red field ratio that is the ratio between the nitrate to phosphate in the sea water coming to the next question next question is in which year the environmental protection act was enacted very very simple question in the year 1986 option b will be correct again air act it is coming question in which year noise pollution has been inserted as pollution in the air act yes it is asking air pollution act was amended in which year where noise pollution is also considered as an air pollution so here it will be in the year what it will be in the year 1987 yes air act was initially enacted in 1981 but it was amended in 1987 where noise pollution was also considered as a type of air pollution i hope it is clear coming to the next question next question is again from the act so acts you should know each and every environmental act very very important this question is 
the first of the major environmental protection act to be promulgated in india was what so same question we have discussed in the last video where i said if you know all this act and rule you can be able to answer noise pollution rule when it came you should tell me so it came in the year 2000 noise pollution rule in the year 2000 don't get confused within noise pollution insertion in air act it was inserted in 1987 but separately noise pollution rule came in 2000 and air act came in the year 1981 we all know environmental protection act in the year 1986 water act in the year 1974 so it is asking which came the first so here first will be water act that is in 1974 so option d will be correct coming to the next question next question from the waste water treatment it is also very very important yes for this exam waste water treatment primary secondary treatment sludge digestion everything you should know aerobic anaerobic digestion so here question is asking during which stage of the waste water treatment are methanogenic microbes most important so here methanogenic microbes which are used for the methane and here it is asking in which stage they are most important whether it is primary treatment sludge digestion biological oxidation or secondary treatment so here methanogenic microbes they release methane so here they are used in the sludge digestion process so option b will be the correct option for this question coming to the next question next question is which one is suitable for the bio augmentation process so first we should know what is bio augmentation bio augmentation is a process of adding microbes and to reduce the pollutant level or toxin level in the water or soil anywhere so that is called as the bio augmentation process where we add microbes the microbes they do their work to reduce the pollutant level or toxin level here it is asking which one is suitable for bio augmentation process whether it is using light for remediation bio venting sludge removal or adding microbes to the clean up site so from the definition itself it is addition of the microbe so it will be option d the correct option adding microbes to a clean up site but you should also know what is bio venting venting means it is coming from the word ventilation venting so ventilation means what we used to open the window or doors so that means we used to allow the air to come in that means aeration so bio venting is the process of providing aeration or air to the microbes in order to perform the bio remediation process or bio augmentation process so it is a process of providing aeration to the microbes for the bio augmentation process but it is not the bio augmentation process bio augmentation is adding of microbes to the clean up site So I hope you have learned something new from this video. You have noted down the important points. If you like this, don't forget to subscribe the channel to get all further updates. Because if you practice MCQ only, we will be able to solve many question in short time. So see you guys in our next video. Till then, take care, keep smiling, and believe in yourself.